just when you think that Toto Wolf's got enough to deal with right now, his former employee just threw a potential spanner in the works. And it's got something to do with Kimi Antonelli. Don't worry, I'm not going to be hyping up the Italian F2 driver, all alongside the other big hot ticket item, Ollie Berman, at the same team. Oh boy, that's gonna be a doozy to watch. That's not the focus of this video, because quite frankly, they're both likely to be in Formula One, with Ollie Berman probably going to be tipped to be partnering, maybe, I think, Nico Hülkenberg at Haas. But as for Kimi Antonelli, the watchword was that Oh, Kimi will probably end up going to Williams for a year or two before then going to Mercedes eventually. But things aren't looking quite as solid in terms of that theory anymore. But what James Valls has demonstrated right now is that he is not going to be necessarily rolling out the red carpet for Kimi Antonelli just because Toto Wolff said that he would like him to be in F1. It's not a guarantee that he'll be going to Grove and he might have no other choice but going to Brackley straight away negating the potential idea of having Fernando Alonso, Carlos Sainz, or even Alex Albon himself being part of the Mercedes fold. Oh yeah, you heard me. Williams ain't a Mercedes B team no more. James Valls has made Kimi Antonelli's supposed route to F1 a little bit trickier, or at least not quite as obvious as first thought. After saying that Kimi or Andrea, I say Andrea Antonelli because technically that is his first name and that's what F1 socials are going with, so I'm guessing they're gonna just call him Andrea Antonelli? Was well, not a given for replacing Logan Sargent. That assumed to be the case since Alex Albon is still contracted to Williams for 2025. Although, of course, contracts can be broken as we saw with Daniel Ricciardo and McLaren. And if Alex Albon were to go a year before he was due, I'm pretty sure that Williams would make anybody who would try and buy Alex's life a little bit harder and uh, not cheap. But when it comes to Antonelli, Val stated that he would not necessarily be a shoe in for a seat at the Grove team for 2025, despite saying he had done a fantastic job in the Junior Formula Series. And it's not like James is being some casual observer or something, having no clue as to the history of Kimi Antonelli and his path to F2. No. James Vowles was one of the key founders of the Mercedes Junior team. And he knows exactly what Kimi Antonelli is capable of after the Mercedes Junior team signed him up when he was just 11 years old. This news to me is incredibly compelling. It's fascinating because James Vowles knows what he's talking about. He has seen the data of Kimi Antonelli and his progression through the junior ranks. And believe me, Vowles is a lover of data. I'm pretty sure that he is very intimate when it comes to data. Oh, cool, look at those numbers. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's a that's a theatrical reconstruction of James Fowles looking at telemetry. Sorry, James. And despite getting down and dirty with data, Fowles is not immediately just going, okay, Kimmy, you can come in, no problem. As James says so right here. Him. From my perspective, I have no doubt that Kimi will be in F1. He's done incredibly well in his junior series, but that doesn't mean he'll be in Williams necessarily. I believe in investing in youth, but I'll take people on merit into the organization. I'm fortunate enough to have two juniors myself in F2 and one in F3. In fact, now we're slowly filling out the ladder. I have one in Freca, Formula Regional, and one who will join an F4 before the end of the year. So we're starting to build a program that I think is a sensible program to develop the next generation of drivers. He then later goes on to say that Toto should be happy that Kimi Antonelli is such an interesting prospect and having one of the best teams on the grid as his wheelhouse. But this tells me once again that James Valls is moving away from just being the second team to Mercedes, that Williams are now becoming the independent team that they were once famous for being. The pinnacle of the privateers, right when Haas is doing the opposite and getting closer to the bosom of Ferrari, Gene Haas not wanting to pay a single dollar more than he would like to, and then going to Komatsu, hey, we got this relationship with Ferrari, right? Well, why aren't we doing more with it? Uh, Komatsu, go and talk to Vasseur and uh, butter him up because um, my, 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 my wallet's looking a bit uh, thin. Yeah, can, can you do that? I feel so sorry for Ayo Komatsu right now, since Sauber is transforming itself into Audi and no longer being a Ferrari B team. At least for now, my video from yesterday will go into more detail about Audi's latest wobble. Yes, of course. They have recently signed a deal to commit to Mercedes power units and supplies up until 2030. But what I am seeing from James Fowles is that they want to establish a relationship with Mercedes that is akin to the likes of Aston Martin, who buy similar components to Williams. Maybe one day they might get to a relationship status that McLaren have, where they just take the power units only and develop the suspension and gearbox themselves, 
But for now, James Valls is trying to distance himself away from just being the guaranteed B team for Mercedes. I'm really proud with what Valls is doing. He has shown so much integrity in the past 12 months because before then, Toto was able to have a lot of influence over the team. And one of the most high profile examples of all of this goes back to 2021 when Alex Albon was being signed to Williams for 2022. Do you remember the stink that Toto kicked up after all of that went down? In the midst of a very fractious 2021 challenge with Red Bull, there were concerns coming from Mercedes that Albon was acting as some kind of mole for their rivals and potentially could pass back vital information on the Mercedes power unit and gearbox whilst driving for Williams. Toto was demanding that Albon cut ties with Red Bull right here and right now. And Christian Horner dubbed this all as highly unusual, a little bit weird, but ultimately, Toto Wolf did get what he wanted. Alex Albon did part ties with Red Bull Racing, but he did keep a personal sponsorship with Red Bull the drinks company for another year. He no longer has the Red Bull logo on his helmet. I believe he has some personal ties to the Red Bull drinks company with some of their lesser known brands, I think, Moose or something? Monsoon Valley, I think? I think that's a Red Bull drink. But what makes this even more surreal is that at the same time, Alex Albon was being linked to the likes of Alfa Romeo. And according to that same piece that was sourced from Autosport, Mattia Bonotto had absolutely no reservations of Alex Albon joining Alfa Romeo, saying that he saw no problem with it, with his Red Bull connections. But as soon as Alex Albon became a free agent, Toto's rhetoric completely changed. He was glowing of Alex Albon and started to paddle back his really aggressive rhetoric, saying, you know, it's just the way it was. I have no personal ill feelings towards Alex, but you know, the way it was. But you now get the feeling that if this happened in 2023 with Vowels in charge, it would have happened a lot more differently. Seriously, Alex Albon acting like a spy? Come on, what is this, the 1950s? In any case, Valz is saying that Toto is lucky to have Kimi Antonelli and that he isn't questioning his future and his place in F1. It's pretty obvious he'll get there. But now it's become less clear as to how Antonelli will get into Formula One. I am not saying that Valz has closed the door on Antonelli per se, more like he's pulled it too. It's still ajar. There is a chance for Kimi Antonelli to join with Williams, but it's not a guarantee. First dibs for a seat at Williams in F1 goes to people who are currently in the Williams Driver Academy. And granted, Toto Wolff has been quite calm about Antonelli, even though in the wake of Lewis Hamilton leaving, he did get a little bit fiery when he was talking about doing something bold. And immediately people leapt to the conclusion that, oh, they're going to stick Kimi Antonelli in the car almost immediately regardless if he wins the championship or not or if he comes sixth because technically Kimi Antonelli does have enough super license points to join Formula One and he'll be turning 18 this year but that's been tempered a little bit because as Toto Wolff said Kimi Antonelli hasn't had a smooth ride in the initial F2 tests finding some challenges there so now he's effectively Toto kicked the can down the road a little bit saying oh we'll just wait until the first few races have gone down and then we'll see what we will do about 2025 there's no rush once Kimi Antonelli turns 18 we will see him in the W15 for an FP1 session right after he turns 18 on the 25th of August of this year and wouldn't you know it Five days after that, the Italian Grand Prix takes place. I would not be surprised if, in some kind of daring PR move, they stick Kimi Antonelli in an FP1 session alongside Lewis Hamilton at Monza, the Italian Tofosi would be overjoyed seeing an Italian driver back in F1 for the first time since Italian Jesus went on to the World Endurance Championship with Ferrari and found a second coming in his career. But seriously, if you're working in the Mercedes PR team and watching this video, you really need to make that happen. But do you see what I'm getting at here? It's about Mercedes getting Kimi Antonelli into Formula One because Valls is making it clearer and clearer by the day that it's up to Toto to do the deed. All of this is squarely in Toto Wolf's inbox. Let's just make sure that he prints out the email. Granted, if Kimi Antonelli does get over his preseason jitters and manages to beat Oli Berman in a straight fight for the F2 Championship and gets to win the Formula 2 title at the first time of asking in his rookie year, then Toto will really be in a quandary because, as is stipulated by the rules of Formula 2, if you have won the title, you can't continue. You have to go somewhere else. And for the last few years, that's usually meant that you end up in either Formula One reserve driver purgatory, like Felipe Dragovic for all eternity, or you have to go somewhere else and wait your turn. Either IndyCar 
or World Endurance, European Le Mans, like with Frederick Vesti, or you might even go and do what Teo Porcher is doing and Ayumu Iwasa for Red Bull and go to Super Formula, which is gaining more and more credibility by the day because that machinery is effectively just the Japanese version of Formula 2 cars. And also, by the way, don't sleep on the Tomo Miyata. The current Super Formula champion is now driving in F2. That's another little thing to watch. I guarantee you that Toto Wolf would be making a trip to Oxfordshire, getting down on his knees in James's office and going, for God's sake, James, you have to put Kimi in the car. I mean, of course he could put Kimi Antonelli in the W16 alongside George Russell, but that could put George Russell's nose out of joint after having finally gotten the plum to become their leader. And then in comes this Wunderkind who is now being touted as the next Max Verstappen. And if Kimi Antonelli does succeed and outclasses George, then, Oh my god, that, uh, I wouldn't want to be in that room. Oh. And it's adding further fuel to the fire of my thinking that James Vowles is really, really getting into the role of being the team principal at Williams. He is determined to make that team his own and do what he did with the Mercedes Junior team with the Williams Driver Academy. He's done it once, he'll do it again. And as you can see right here, eight drivers are currently represented by Williams in all sorts of motorsport, including the likes of karting, in the NXT with Jamie Chadwick, and of course, Formula 2 and Formula 3. And three of these drivers being women, including the likes of Leah Block, yes, Ken Block's daughter in F1 Academy, and the karting sensation in Japan, Sada Matsui. Am I right in thinking that Williams has currently the most women in their driver academy? I think so. But when you look at that list a little deeper, what you're starting to see here, and I think the McLaren Junior Academy or whatever it's called, is sort of going the same way, is that more and more of these academies are going down to the karting level to try and find future talent. Just like what the Mercedes Junior team did with Kimi Antonelli. They plucked him out of karting and brought him up through there because that's what happened with Lewis Hamilton. And that's kind of what happened with Max Verstappen because they were found while they were still karting. And this goes back to another interview that Valves conducted back last year about a growing concern with academies, that there is a void in talent in F2 and F3. And now you have to sign drivers under the age of 16 to get anywhere. And in the case of Sada Matsuri and their Ukrainian karter Oleksandr Bondarev, barely into their teens. And just because you're picking somebody in karting doesn't mean that that's an easy ride and a guaranteed way to success. The younger you go, there is far less guarantee that their talent in the junior divisions will translate to success in the higher categories. They might be fantastic in karting, but when you stick them in a single seater open wheeler, they might flounder or they might just blend into the background. And all of that investment might ultimately be a hiding to nowhere. And then you'll just have to start all over again and part company. And then, yeah, that gets uh, that, that gets really um, awkward. If you wait until 16 to then snap people for your academy, they're more likely to be pinched by maybe Ferrari, Mercedes, Red Bull, Alpine, and now any other team that decides to have a young driver initiative, regardless of it being a full-on academy or just being some kind of little program within their big F1 team. Valves does regret signing Kimi Antonelli that early because he can't bring him to the Williams Driver Academy himself. But as I said before earlier in this video, he is not saying that he is definitely not going to sign Kimi Antonelli, but he is certainly not going to give Kimi Antonelli first dibs, that he is going to look to his own Driver Academy for potentially the replacement to Logan Sargent, or in the case if Alex Albon gets pinched, then they could have somebody going in with Logan Sargent. But then again, Logan Sargent might prove everybody wrong and he then gets a third season in Formula One. But the balance of power has shifted in the 12 months that James Valls has been team principal. Before Valls came along that if Toto Wolff wanted something to happen at Williams for the benefit of Mercedes, it happened. It would have been like, right, you're putting Kimi in the car. Now it's more like Valls going to Toto. Right, okay, Toto, we are receptive to having maybe Kimi Antonelli in the car. Let's talk. You see the difference there? It's clear as day. There's so much more control in Williams' camp. And James Valls will just point out to Toto, well, you've got an open seat at Mercedes. You could just put Kimi in there and take a big risk because Lewis Hamilton's not there anymore. You've got a perfect opportunity to do what Toro Rosso did with Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton did at McLaren back in 2007. Just put a brand new rookie in and see what happens. But then there lies the rub because Mercedes is still a big team in Formula One. And throughout all the last few weeks, you've seen multiple drivers being touted to that second seat alongside George Russell, including a lot of cheekery with Fernando Alonso, Carlos Sainz potentially being touted, and then of course Alex Albon and Mick Schumacher, Valtteri Bottas making a return. There are multiple drivers connected potentially to Brackley, 
not just Kimi Antonelli. So if they are spoiled for choice and don't wish for Antonelli to be pinched by another team stable, Williams might be a stopgap. But Valves won't make it so clear cut as taking Kimi on with little resistance. Because if he did do that and just bent over backwards and let Kimi Antonelli come in all guns blazing, then that would be undermining all the work that Valves has been doing with the Williams Driver Academy in trying to make it a credible academy for future drivers to really get a chance in getting into the bigger categories of motorsport and even Formula One. Getting into the situation where the Red Bull Junior team is right now. With the second team, no longer being a guaranteed safe haven for future rookie stars of the Red Bull camp to get into the top team. And now the top team is more receptive to outside drivers because we all saw the temptations around Lando Norris before then he got snapped up by McLaren. That second seat alongside Max Verstappen, it's not guaranteed anymore to the likes of Yuki Tsunoda, Daniel Ricciardo, and Liam Lawson, who despite getting his chance in Formula One, scoring multiple times, and out qualifying Max Verstappen at Singapore, he still doesn't have a guaranteed drive until 2025. How messed up is that? No, James Valls wants to be honorable and truthful to his driver academy because he was so involved with setting up the Mercedes junior team in 2014. And no joke, it was practically established right after Mercedes lost the opportunity to sign up Max Verstappen because Red Bull had Toro Rosso immediately and a chance to get into F1 at once instead of Mercedes plan to get him into GP2 and then see what happens in two years. They, they, they just took too long. So with Kimi not being a guaranteed cert for Williams anymore and Mercedes spoiled for choice, Williams are seriously showcasing James Val's evolution as a team principal. In my eyes, he's not going to be turning into a carbon copy of Toto Wolff. No. I think James Valls is morphing into the next incarnation of Ross Braun. Not afraid to be accountable for his own decisions, keen to build up a team, and keen to take risks for the future, with Alex Albon, a really big team leader in terms of the driving department, right by his side. I can't tell you how remarkable this is to witness, and you really do get the feeling that if all of this turns out to be a really good resume for him to then become the new team principal at Mercedes, then all the power to him, but right now, he is the rep at Williams, and he's going to make them into a credible team once more. But I think you don't need me to tell you that the dilemma surrounding Kimi Antonelli is incredibly strong for all concerned. And if you'd like to find out more why this is the case, right before the news of Lewis Hamilton going to Ferrari dropped, you can go and watch this video next to get the scoop as to why this Italian is so alluring. <laughs>